the disclaimer on the other one, you bastard. <laughs> What are you doing? I just finished a marathon in December. Can't oh, you let you me sleep? Oh, you've had enough sleep, you bastard. It's time for you to get back to work. Ow! What was that for? Ah. Wake the f*** up, samurai. We've got some preconceptions to burn. With this piece of s***. No, nobody deserves this. Nobody deserves to be tormented by this abominable piece of plastic! Really? Well, get to writing your f***ing script then! F*** off! That's the spirit! So the new decade approaches, and I'm all ready to do my top lists, but apparently I can't until this f***ing abomination has been dealt with. I don't think it's a stretch to say that Siege has been a winner, aside from maybe Cog, Six Gun and the Rescue Patrol. And even those toys aren't as bad as the absolutely abysmal worst entries in the Prime Wars trilogy such as Volcanicus or Brawl from Combiner Wars. And honestly, I thought Astro Train would have been the same. He did look bloody brilliant on release, and I thought he would add to the brilliant lineup of the rest of the line. Then, the high comparisons came in. And oh boy! Look, I was fine with what they did in Power of the Primes. I was fine with Ultra Magnus. I was even fine with Shockwave. But this is a step too far. So let's begin the decade with a straight up beatdown. This toy needs to be taught a lesson, so let's bring the pain. Greetings Cybertronians, I'm Dr. Lockdown, and today's diagnosis pertains to WFC S51 Astro Train from the Siege line, and also the Earthrise line, because apparently re-releasing it in both lines will make people like it more. So in case you're wondering why I picked up a toy that I knew I'd hate right off the bat is because I'm a filthy hypocrite who will do anything for those sweet, sweet YouTube views. Am I supporting Hasbro and their shitty business practices? Yes, yes I am. But regardless, in his god-awful train mode, he... uh... Uh, actually, to be quite honest, this train mode is bloody brilliant. I never really hated the time to turn version, but I'll be real with you. When I think of the ideal way in which an Astro Train should be updated, this is the absolute best case scenario. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a battle train. This probably has to at the very least be the best sculpted alt mode that I've ever seen. There's so much detail here that it's somewhat difficult to figure out where to start, but I'll try my best anyway. I absolutely love that they've included the pistons and shit on the side here. Granted, they aren't properly connected to the wheels themselves, but the sheer detail more than makes up for it. They've compensated for the immense outward position by adding these subtle guns on the side. They make no sense from an engineering perspective, but it definitely sells you on the fact that this is an alien Earth hybrid train that fits into the Cybertron tagline, although he is being re-released in Earthrise. Although apparently Earthrise takes place in space? What the f***? Another really neat thing is that, with the exception of the two front wheels, every wheel on this thing is pinned. This means that the rolling action on this guy is pretty much perfect. That is to say, by stealing from a far more skilled YouTuber than I... <laughs> Fortunately, given the way he's designed, the front wheels don't line up with any potential track points anyway, which is a good thing because unfortunately my copy has a deformed front wheel. Damn it! Now I realise that this front section is a massive turnoff for a lot of Siege collectors, and whilst I can't say I blame them, I like that they've actually doubled down on it. It almost gives the impression that there's actually a smaller train underneath that has been coated in layers and layers of armour as time has gone by. This effect and the overall design is elevated by the most creative use of feet since Thrilling 30 Roadbuster. I'm sure this is supposed to mimic some actual train mechanical details, but honestly I neither have the knowledge nor the give a fuckness on the topic. And honestly I just think it looks really cool. The weathering also has a nice effect, whether intentional or unintentional, where it looks like it's been rusted from the extra exhaust and soot coming out of the extra funnel, even if any smart collector knows that it's actually just a 5mm peg. On the topic, one small downside is that he is lacking in traditional weapon ports that make the line so much fun. Still, I don't see where they could have added them without breaking the sculpt, what they've done here is already exceptional. Now whilst he does have a lot of paint, most of it is for the purpose of colour correction. Most of the purple on the top section is paint, as is the entire front of the train. Whilst it's a little unfortunate that Astro Train doesn't have a lot of painted small details, the design itself is covered in sculpted details, so I don't think it truly matters. Besides, that's not to say he has none whatsoever, the pipes on the side of the train get some lovely gunmetal, as do the windows on the back. And who could forget the thruster section 
sporting both silver and gunmetal. Really glad this detail was included, it's so quintessentially Astro Train. Honestly, this design is great, they've crammed all of their engineering and their sculpting prowess into this thing to the point where I don't even think it could be improved with extras like repro labels. No doubt someone will try to quote unquote fix the front, but honestly I don't think it needs it. And if that wasn't good enough, he actually comes with accessories for the train mode. Or rather, just one accessory. Maybe the Hasbro designers were secretly taking a look at Fancy Cell Transportation Captain, maybe they weren't. But regardless, Astro Train has his own little tender. Plugging it in can get a smidge annoying thanks to the rotating tri-pegs, but the end result does look pretty bloody awesome. It's actually functional too, as if you follow a very specific method, you can store all five of his weapons. Without all the weapons stored in there, it does seem pretty useless and bloody hollow, but once you get the weapons in there, it both looks and feels great. And by god does it make the murder train look ever so special. It still rolls really well, although the wheels aren't pinned on the back here, but they are pegged in in such a way that allows for extra mobility. Combine this with the sheer weight of this thing and there ain't nothing stopping this train. I also love how there's a little bit of extra purple paint on the side, it really makes the thing pop. Personally, I could have used with an extra con symbol here though. That being said, there is a criticism that some of my more G1-centric fans have notified me of. Many insist that the top of the train looks ugly thanks to the extra treads, and the fact that it doesn't mimic a proper coal car. Well, under normal circumstances, I'd tell them, shut up, it's a space train, but in this instance, if you remove the weapons and the top section, you can mimic a coal car in its empty state. Do I find this stupid? Yes. Do I feel like I need to acknowledge it to satisfy a vocal minority? No, but I'll do it anyway. So yeah, train mode. Bloody good. But I still fucking hate this thing! I paid 90 bucks for this piece of shit, and it's only giving me a Voyager-sized figure?! How dare they, those fat f Oh, it's actually the size of a traditional leader in this mode. That kinda makes sense. Also, it's comparable weight to the leaders of the Prime Wars trilogy. I mean, Studio Series blows it out of the water, but apples to apples, you know? I know, but look, they're both 300 grams, right? So they're the same? I wouldn't want to look at the size of this, that's cheating. No, they're the same no, weight. They're 300 grams. What? Without a doubt, this is the most fun Astro Train that I've ever had the pleasure of transforming in my entire life. They've really done a brilliant job with engineering this thing. And I would have shown you Toy World Villa Star to show the kind of opposite end of the spectrum, but uh... You know, people keep asking me why I hate clear plastic so much, and there's your goddamn reason. This was sitting in storage for god knows how long, I haven't been using it, I haven't been transforming it, and it cracked to pieces. Oh, joy. Yeah, not great at all, is it? But anyway, regardless of which, he is very simple to transform. Well, not really simple, but he is enjoyable. You want to remove the coal car, bring these doodads up, Take the wheel section here and push it up into the thing and it'll need to click on both sides. Come underneath and pull these sections out. Rotate these around until they don't really lock in place but they do line up there very nicely. And then open up the wings all the way. Once those are out of the way, you can peg these onto the sides here. Then you temporarily open up these sections here and that'll allow you to open up the legs as well. That's so that you can fold in the boiler section over there. Collapse it together again and then rotate the whole section around like so and then collapse these in once again as well. Open up the panels on the side here, keep them all the way in and then you rotate this 180 degrees and it locks into place. You then have to temporarily open up that so that that can slot in between the arms and then peg that back into place and that will remain rock solid. And we're done! A very simple Astro Train that is transformed very, very quickly. That's a new one. You know, to enforce my belief that this figure is awful, I want to say this shuttle is pretty much a shittle. And yeah, it does have its issues, but honestly, I don't hate it. I don't particularly love it either, but let's take a look at pretty much every triple changer in history. Without fail, they've all had at least one bad mode. Thrilling 30's Springer had the helicopter mode, Titans Return Sentinel Prime and by extension Astro Train had the train mode, Optimus Prime and by extension Octane, no I'm not calling it Octone, had the plane mode, Siege Springer, okay, actually that looks fantastic in all of its modes. But whatever, the point is that almost every triple changer usually sacrifices one mode to make the others work. And if we're going to choose a mode to sacrifice, I think they made the right choice. It's not a stretch to say that the train mode is the most iconic of Astro Train, with apologies to NASA fans everywhere, yet constantly it seems to be the one that gets shafted because it's somewhat easier to engineer. I'm honestly quite happy with the decision they made here, although that being said, it's not too bad. Addressing the elephant in the room, yes, the back section is kind of a mess and it is pretty hard to ignore, but as far as sacrifices go, I don't feel it's that bad, although I do feel they could have rectified this with some extra pieces from the coal car, maybe adding some extra shield pieces that turn into weapons in the other modes. You could say that it's bad because it's parts forming, but at least it would have been better than what they did with Cliff Jumper. Seriously, what the f was Hasbro thinking? Oh, 
Sick, can you spend two minutes without complaining about a toy that isn't even out yet? Sorry, what? I've been dealing with the private messages from your fans who are annoyed with the constant cliff jumper complaining. Why are you complaining about a toy that ain't even out yet? Oh, it's getting annoying, so please, can you just stop it for a bit? Oh, I'm sorry, I wasn't actually aware about that. Hmm. Well, can I still make fun of Mars toys? Oh, yeah, sure. Those bastards deserve it. Sweet. F*** you, Mars Toys! If anything, I actually find the front section a bit more distracting. The actual cockpit module is sculpted and painted quite well. The problem lies with these huge leg panels. I really wish these had been smaller somehow, even if it's a weird thing to complain about, considering most people I talk to love the way the front section looks. I don't care if it's G1 toy accurate, it looks clunky and I dislike it. It isn't helped by the weathering details. I actually like most examples of weathering in the Siege line, but this just puts me off. Something closer to how Siege Starscream handled it would have worked better in this instance. The rest of the paint, though, beautiful. As I mentioned earlier, the cockpit is painted exceptionally well with metallic silver windows and an imposing purple nose cone. You get lovely red and yellow paint on the side, which as far as I can tell is a loose reference to the G1 toy. Definitely more reserved though, and certainly for the better given the militaristic nature of the design. The wings are painted grey for colour correction, and it works exceptionally well. Thank fuck they gave him proper Decepticon symbols that can actually be seen in robot mode. Take a hint, Starscream. Finally, the awesome painted thruster section returns. So there's a lot of paint on this guy, although it is subtle. It does work though, one cannot forget that. Accessory-wise, he's got weapon ports all over his body for combat system compatibility. The ones you get in the set are pretty ridiculous, but I like that they're at least committed to the gimmick in this mode, even if the train mode's somewhat forgot. And then you get to the coal car, which finally transforms into... a launch pad. A f launch pad. This is by far my biggest criticism with this figure. They really dropped the ball on this thing. Ultra Magnus and Shockwave, or in this instance Astro Magnum, were both able to fully combine with their additions, and Astro Train gets a glorified flattened tuning fork. The idea is solid, don't get me wrong, but the end result is pretty goddamn boring. And while I'm here, although this isn't really a criticism, why isn't the Earthrise gimmick compatible with the old Times Return leaders? I get that it's not entirely essential, but it would have been a really cool throwback, especially since they've already added Titan Master compatibility with Jetfire, Eight Face and most likely the upcoming Snapdragon. Massively missed opportunity. At least the launch pad has a swivel on the pegs. Yippee, I guess. Was it really worth the wobbliness in the train mode? Still, faults and all, I like this alt mode. It's not bad. The train mode more than makes up for it, I guess. I still hate this figure for being so tiny. How dare Hasbro make a figure this small at such a high price? Ah! <sighs> Just <sighs> admit what? You actually like the figure. What? what? No, I don't! You've tricked yourself into thinking you hate it just because of some arbitrary scale problems. Yet you claim that scale isn't an issue and it should be ignored. But it's all thanks to that stupid f concept of scale. That infernal Sunbo chart has ruined everyone's entire concept of what they want to collect in a line. They end up buying shittier toys because they scale better, and they end up skipping good toys because they don't scale at all. F*** the Sunbow chart, f*** the G1 cartoon, f*** Hasbro, f*** Takara, and f*** this toy! You claim scale doesn't matter, and yet you're complaining about scale? What the f***? Don't you start! You know how I know I'm right. You haven't shut me down yet. Every time, you're always arguing. Yet you're stolen. What? You haven't shut me down. With your empty Megatron yet? I. Uh. Uh. You. Uh, uh. Let's just get on with the transformation. Transformation to robot mode is also pretty simple and pretty fun as well, although most of it revolves going back to the train mode in the same situations. Open up the leg panels and it'll, I guess, t t untab when you do so, but that's fine. That'll allow you to peg these in, and make sure the nose cone is facing forward because that will allow everything to fold up properly. You don't want the train part facing the bottom, that's wrong. For some bizarre reason, you untab this, rotate a little bit, and then untab. So we'll tab it back in. That is weird, I don't know why they did that, seems kind of pointless. But then, of course, you untab the foot, you've got a peg there and a slot there, and it pegs together. 
The backpack is surprisingly simple. You just untap that, come around to the back here and collapse it there. Then you untap the whole backpack and re-tab it in just there. That is super easy, super solid, super effective, puts a lot of other third-party Astro trains to shame. You bring the tail fin back into its train position by going the opposite direction that we did for the shuttle mode. Bring these sections around, tab them into place. They're on double hinges and tabbed in. You want to untab that like so. Rotate 180 degrees and flip out the fist. The fists actually click into place as well. And last but not least, the head rotates 180 degrees. If you want to, you can also have the head facing the bottom, but I don't think anyone does. Oh, and almost forgot, you also bring down the hip skirts, which are locked in there to reveal the midriff. So I don't think it's a stretch to say that this is probably the best Astro Train transformation on the planet. Not gonna lie, it's pretty bloody special. Much like most of the figures from the Siege line, cartoon inspiration is what gets funneled into Astro Train's robot mode. On a personal level, I am a little bit disappointed. To me, one of the most iconic elements of Astro Train is the chest wing. And although I get what they're going for, I am a little bit disappointed that all we've got is a traditional chest square. That being said, the robot mode is pretty good. Design-wise, there aren't many specific details that stand out very much, but much like the train mode, the sculpted detail is absolutely phenomenal. The chest and arms alone give the design a real authoritative feel, and the head sculpt pierces through the utilitarian massive grey with an awesome yellow and purple combo. In general, there isn't really much purple on the design, but it gets the job done for the most part. Unlike most versions of Astro Train that I've handled, the backpack actually cleans up extremely well. It even gets completely out of the way of the waist swivel, a feat that not even Siege Springer was able to accomplish. Like f man, talk about black magic engineering. Astro Train isn't really known for being a limber fellow, but somehow against all the odds, the standard Siege articulation pulls through. What strikes me as really cool is that almost every angle is picture perfect. There are no hollow areas or crazy kibble pieces lying around. It just shocks me that they were able to pull off the robot mode so well. It's one thing when you're dealing with two uncompromised Cybertronian vehicles, but it's another thing when you've got two uncompromised realistic ones. The only teeny bits of contention are the fist cavities on his wrists, which, given the transformation, are honestly fine, and the weird kibble sections on the insides of the legs, which are hard to notice anyway. It may not be the most interesting robot mode on the planet, but they've executed it to such a high level that there's honestly nothing to complain about. But even in his more dynamic poses, the overall design is a bit plain, so to rectify this, you get weapons. A metric f ton of weapons. The first gun is pretty generic, and I suppose it's loosely based on the G1 version. It's completely overshadowed by the minigun though, and when I say minigun, I really do mean mini. It looks great, but it's far too small. It works a little better on deluxes though, so if you want to give it to someone like Ironhide, then it's not really a bad choice. You've also got these cool dual lasers, and although they admittedly don't peg into the hands very well, their designs are quite good. They can store on the back too, which is a rather nice touch. Finally, you get a rocket pod, and it's alright, nothing special sadly, but it gets the job done. If you so desire, you can combine all of these weapons, and like pretty much every other example of combining weapons, it looks like dog sh**. The idea of combining weapons sounds cool, but until Haztacs start working on the combined mode first, and then going backwards instead of just half assing it, it's not a feature that I or many others will care about. His other accessories include the launch pad, which I've already discussed, it's boring as sh**, and these stupid things, which I'll get to in a moment. I do like that he has a lot of guns, but I can't help but feel they're a smidge underdone. They're not terrible by any means, but there's a lot they could have done with them, and ultimately the market for non f and sh Shapeways is still there for this fellow. His articulation, as hinted earlier, is really bloody good. Not the best of the line, but all is present and accounted for. The head is on a ball joint that sadly only gets a little bit of side to side, and he has universal shoulders that somehow don't get in the way of the pylons. He has a bicep swivel, and thanks to the transformation, he has a double jointed elbow, which is really nice. Sadly, he has no wrist swivel, which is kind of a bummer considering they were able to engineer one on Starscream when he had a similar wrist transformation, but the wrist does move downwards to recreate some iconic gunslinger poses from the Old West. I cannot stress enough how pleasing it is to see a functioning waist swivel on an Astro Train, especially considering how many have been gimped or slightly hindered in the past thanks to awkward backpacks. For once, we actually have a mainline transformer with functioning front skirts, and to take it further, they actually get out of the way enough to allow for full forward motion on the universal joints. This may seem like nothing, but considering some of the figures I've looked at recently, this is almost therapeutic to me. Sadly, his backwards motion is non-existent though, however, his thighs do swivel with no issue, but due to transformation, he sadly only has a 90 degree knee bend, but considering the immense engineering feat of compressing the kibble into something that small, I think it's understandable. Finally, a simple ankle tilt. Some might consider untabbing the foot a cheating foot pivot, but it breaks the sculpt far too much, so honestly don't count it. Still, all in all, pretty good. Honestly, Siege has spoiled us with its level of articulation. We as a fandom probably don't deserve this, but by god we got it anyway. Then we get to the main reason why this figure is the worst f***ing thing ever and why I despise it with every fibre of my being. What the f*** is this sizing? How is this a leader? How is this okay in this day and age? 
We live in a time where a figure like Blackout exists, where we have a full combiner at the leader price point, and they think this is okay? How is this okay? And to add insult to injury, the two leftover parts from the launch pad become shoes. SHOES! Do you know what this is? This is the Hasbro equivalent of thigh extenders, which are known to new to transformations and ruined proportions just for the sake of scaling. Whilst these don't look as tacked on as their fan-made competitors, they still completely ruin the flow of the legs. The height doesn't even change that much, it's only slightly taller than your average Voyager, and well below the Titans Return version. So honestly, this kills the figure for me. It's horrible, it's deceptive in its marketing, and it's not worthy of the leader class. F this figure, and all that it stands for. Except the awesome engineering that probably couldn't have been done on a Voyager price point. That's pretty bloody neat. But still, f this figure! Except for the awesome sculpting in the train mode and the amazing articulation in robot mode. But still, f*** this figure! Except for the decent paintwork, expert cable management, masterful sculpt work in robot mode, decent execution of the shuttle mode, awesome addition of the coal car, massive assortment of weaponry, beautiful head sculpt, expert articulation, awesome fun factor, brilliant plastic quality, uncompromising- Okay, 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 I, I admit it. I admit it. I love this toy. To f***ing bits. Yes, it's expensive. Yes, it's a Voyager figure at a leader price point with a somewhat disappointing coal car, but it is still f***ing brilliant. And to be honest, we as a fandom indulge in figures twice the price for half the size with third-party legends, so why, when Hasbro does this, are we complaining about this sh**? Why, when Hasbro does this, was I complaining as this sh**? It's because we're hypocrites. This toy is worth every single penny of that $90 price tag. It's not worth more on a sale, it's brilliant now, and you should buy it right now. You happy? <clears throat> Jokes aside, Hasbro has given us more paint, more engineering, better sculpt work, and an incredibly enjoyable transformation that gets out of the way of the brilliant articulation. All of these things are going to cost more, so it is understandable. We get more for more money. And the true moments that really made me realize just how brilliant Astro Train was was this tiny little element of transformation at the front right here. See, I don't often use instructions. I prefer to figure out transformations on my own. I think that's part of the joy of it, although sometimes it kind of backfires, such as alien attack farage. So I was looking at the train mode, and the front wheels looked a bit lopsided, and I was messing around. Oh, maybe this... Oh, it folds down like that! And that is when I realized that this toy was truly special. Yeah, I can take or leave the coal car, but this base train mode is bloody brilliant. And the other modes are pretty darn good too. Putting this review aside, I was genuinely against Astro Train's release when he was first announced, because that size was so beholden to that garbage Sunbow chart, and, well, I have a bit of a distaste for that Sunbow chart, to be honest. So I'm not sure why I actually picked him up, despite the fact I knew I was going to hate him. Although I didn't really know, because he turned out to be brilliant. It's kind of the same thing that happened with World War II Bumblebee, but the end result was the antithesis. In all honesty, it was a wonderful way to end the decade, and reviewing him was a brilliant way to start the new one. Honestly, don't wait for a sale. Just grab him if you see him. He is worth absolutely every single penny, and I can't argue against that. If we could get a Blitzwing, or maybe a Sandstorm, or maybe an Octane in this style, then I don't mind if we've just gotten them recently, because it truly is amazing. But enough looking at the past, it's time to look back at the past. I've got some lists to make, and I'll catch you later. Oh, uh, I almost tripped over the, the charging port. I had better be careful. Oh, wait, now it's not charging. Bugger! There we go, that's more like it. Can you see the sun is shining on me? It makes me feel so free, so alive. It makes me want to survive. And the sky.